Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Elise Andrews and I make new videos every Tuesday talking about my post-grad stresses, successes, and creative endeavors. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing all of the books that I read in 2020 with you. So before we get into the rest of the video, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and comment your favorite book that you read in 2020. I would love to add it to my own reading list. First, I'm going to go through some of my statistics from Goodreads and then I'm going to just go through every book that I read and kind of just like list them and then give a brief kind of summary of my thoughts on the book and then I will do a little reflection about reading in 2020. I joined Goodreads in the summer of 2020 and I set 25 books as my reading goal for the year. If I had started a little earlier, I probably would have read a lot more books. That's why I think next year, I think my goal is gonna be around 50 books. So here are my Goodreads statistics. I have my computer up here and I'm gonna just read off my stats. So I read 26 books this year, which consisted of um, 7,373 pages. I ranked most of them four stars and three were five stars. And those three five star books were War Cross, Never Use Futura, and A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor. Um, the oldest book that I read this year was The Alchemist, which was published in 1988. The newest book, I well, there were two books, the newest books that I read this year were In Five Years and A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor, which were both published in 2020. Um, I read the most books in November, which was six. Um, the shortest book that I read was The Alchemist, consisting of 182 pages, and the longest was A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor, which was 452 pages. The most popular book I read this year was The Alchemist, and the least popular was Elsewhere by Rosita Boland. Um, my average rating of books was 4.3, and I, I have a very hard time ranking books like lower than four stars. So I think, yeah, I don't think I had any below four stars. Those were my stats. And now I'm going to go through all of the books that I read. So here are the books that I read in 2020 as sorted by the author. So first I read The Animators. This was actually the first book that I read this year. It's by Kayla Ray Whitaker and I really enjoyed this book. It's not what I expected um, it to be based off of like the book description on the back side of it, but what it did turn out to be, I it was really great. It's about two female animators and just some things that happen in their lives um, that come along with one of their new feature films being released. So um, definitely recommend it. It is a fiction book and yes. The next book on here is Never Use Futura by Douglas Thomas and I think Ellen Lupton also has uh, like wrote the intro or something. Um, really interesting book about font. This was one of my five star reviews this year. Um, I read it in one day. It was just very good, very interesting and a really good book if you're interested in like the history of design. So the next book on here is Nudge and I enjoyed this book, nonfiction book. Um, just about behavior and I read a bunch of books like this in 2020 and I thought it was pretty interesting. The ending was a little um, more difficult for me to get through and certain parts were just because I'm not in a particular stage of life for the information to be relevant to me but overall I'm happy that I read it. This year also probably my least favorite book unfortunately was A Field Guide to Getting Lost by Rebecca Solnit. I had really high expectations for this book. I still give it four stars. I don't know why. I'd probably give it three stars based off of that reading. It was a memoir type of book and I enjoyed parts of it, but I think whenever I was reading it, I was a little too busy with whatever was going on in my life at that point and I just couldn't focus on it enough and give it the attention it needed. Um, just for me, it was a bit more of a challenging book to read. So I'm definitely going to try to reread it in 2021 um, and maybe my opinion will change after doing that. So the next book on here is In Five Years and this was a pretty good read. I enjoyed it. Um, yeah, not much to say about it. The next one I have is Emotional Design by Donald Norman, who I really like. He's a has a lot of really good things to say about design and kind of user experience design. And I read his initial book, The Design of Everyday Things, about two years ago, and I knew that I had to check this one out too. So if you're a designer, 
um, definitely check this book out. But even if you're just like a person who's somewhat interested in design, but doesn't have the like working design background, I think anyone would enjoy this kind of book. The end of it was a little robot-y, like robot speculation-y, um, just like looking to the future. Next up is Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport. I read this as a part of the Blissful Book Club, which is by, um, it's a book club hosted by a YouTuber that I love, The Bliss Bean. Um, and yeah, it was a really good book, helped me do a kind of digital detox in November. And I'm always looking for ways every year to realign myself with good like values with technology and good practices and not being so hooked to my phone all the time. So this was just another reminder that I need to be more aware of um, technology and like the media that I'm consuming. The next two books are How to Think Like a Great Graphic Designer and Brand Thinking, both by Debbie Millman. She is one of my favorite designers and just people and I don't know, she's so amazing. I got to meet her once like last year. Um, and anyway, so I really enjoyed this, these two books by her. She interviews a lot of different designers and just people within advertising and things like that and branding. And they were really valuable for me on my honors thesis. And these books were actually started in 2019 and finished in 2020. The next book that I have on here is The Silent Patient. This was a good book. I don't really lean towards thrillers a lot, but it was recommended by a few of my friends and I saw that a lot of people seem to be interested in it. And it was good. I read it in about two days just because I, and I tried to read it in just one because I, I really don't like thrillers um, and scary things. And it, it was good. Um, it was definitely a bit of a roller coaster, but I don't know how many more thrillers I'm going to be reaching for next year. The next two books on here are part of the War Cross series. Um, the first one is titled War Cross and the second one is Wild Card. Um, they're both by Marie Lu and yeah, really great books. Um, those were, so War Cross was one of my five star books this year and Wild Card was good, but not as good as War Cross. And yeah, it's just a really great science fiction book. I love science fiction. I think this is YA, which I, it felt a little more mature for YA. I don't know. And it was, is one of those books like this, the, like I read an absolutely remarkable thing, which I'll talk about the sequel in a little bit. Um, but those kind of books that, that those ser that series and this series are just like delicious for my brain, if that makes sense. Like I just love, um, my, my brain just loves the content in them and it makes me excited. So <laughs> The next book on here is The Renaissance Soul. This was also part of that book club that I mentioned and this was really good. It was a more of like a self-help book about people who have several different interests and want to pursue them wholeheartedly and that is me. I just want to be doing five things with intense passion in each of them at the same time. So um, I didn't participate in like all of the activities that the book wanted me to participate in, but I got a lot out of reading it. The next book that I read was Don't Make Me Think. This is a book about UX, UI design, and um, if you're not interested in that, I would not recommend you read this. Um, for me, it was an okay book. I thought it had a lot of good points, but I'm not currently like doing UX research. Um, so it was, um, it didn't feel super relevant to me, but I did get some good things out of it and it was a very short read. The next book on here is The Defining Decade. Um, this was good for me to read and again, like meditate on as I am in my 20s and I'm graduated from college and thinking about my career. Basically books about being in your 20s um, and that you shouldn't throw your 20s away. The next four books are part of the Alphas series written by Lisey Harrison. I reread the entire series. It's um, wonderful YA from my childhood. I kind of reread with one of my really good friends, really good stupid kind of YA series. Um, and it was kind of a guilty pleasure for me throughout the past few months. I also read Asymmetry, which was a book that I actually picked up from my little library in my neighborhood. I was like, this one seems okay, seems pretty good. And I think it was definitely worth the read. Or for a while, I thought that I wanted to read more nonfiction, but I found that fiction is really fun, really good, and I really enjoy it. And so um, next year, I'm gonna definitely try to 
you know, pivot more towards reading more fiction. The next one that I read, which I've talked about a little bit earlier, is A Beautifully Foolish Endeavor by Hank Green. Um, loved the first book. This was a five-star book. For me, both of those books are five stars. They're so good, so delicious for my brain. And yes, I think everyone would like it. Um, it is technically science fiction, but to me it felt a little more like magical realism. And I think that's super cool uh, genre. So anyway, you should read it. The next two books that I have on here are Blink and Talking to Strangers by Malcolm Gladwell. Um, both of these were interesting books. Um, he has a pretty consistent style throughout all of his books. So um, yeah, uh, really interesting, presents a lot of things to really think about and chew on. And um, I think both of these got four stars for me. The next one on here is Big Magic. This was another one of those self-help books and I didn't think that I would like it too much. Um, it has been recommended several times by a bunch of YouTubers that I watch, but it is written by the gal who wrote Eat, Pray, Love and it started out, which isn't any like shade to her, but it, it's just, I was expecting it to be a little more woo-woo, if that makes sense. Like self-help, woo-woo, you could do anything, adopt this mindset. Um, and I thought that that would be just not my favorite thing, but um, it did have a lot of really good parts to it and I actually really enjoyed it and sucked it up. And it made me think a lot about, again, my creative career and where I want to go with my art and um, pursuing my passions. The next one on my list is The Alchemist. Um, really great book. I'd recommend anyone to read it. Um, I think I gave it four stars. Maybe I'd probably give it four and a half if they had half ratings. Um, just a really good book kind of thinking about some philosophical ideas and it's to me mostly just a really great adventure book that's pretty short and um, lot of really good tidbits from there. And finally, the last book that I have on this list is Elsewhere by Rosita Boland, um, which was one of my very, very favorite books this year. Um, just, it was, came at a really good time for me in that I was kind of wanting to travel or get out of my house because of, you know, what's going on. And this was just a great way to read about her travels and I need to pick up more books related to traveling in the future. Um, it just made me very happy to read, kind of also delicious to read, <laughs> and yeah, really good. So that wraps up all of the books that I read this year. Um, like I said, really enjoyed everything that I read. It really enriched my life and my time this year, so really thankful for that. Before I get into my reflection, some of the books that I'm currently reading slash I'm going to be reading in 2021. Right now I'm reading How to Do Nothing and The Woman Who Stole Vermeer, so those are great. And then on my reading list for 2021, I have Borderlands, La Frontera, which is by Gloria Ansaldúa. Um, I believe it's like half in Spanish, half in English. I have it and I'm super excited to read it. I have learned a lot about her in the past and I just look forward to it. Um, also Cuentos Completos by Carmen Martín Gaite. Um, I kind of want to read a few Spanish books in 2021. Um, that's been a goal of mine to actually complete a book in Spanish and so I am going to do that. I also want to finally finish Moral Ground which has been on my currently reading like all year. Kind of a thick book um, but it's really good. It's full of just essays and I kind of pick it up here and there to read it. So I would like to actually finish it in 2021. And in general, I just want to read more art books. That's kind of on my list. So as for a reflection, um, one of the most beneficial parts of this year was having more time and energy and space to be able to read so many books and just kind of getting back into it. To me, it was a real blessing and I'm excited to bring that kind of peace that I get and that meditation that I get from reading into 2021 and yeah it makes me so happy and it felt like reconnecting with my younger self. Some things that helped me were downloading Goodreads because it kind of gamifies your reading experience and also what else oh Libby. Um, Libby is amazing. I've talked about it several times probably in my videos and also in my podcast. I think it's a wonderful way to utilize your library's resources. I have two library cards from Austin and San Antonio. So I have all the books that I could ever want available at my fingertips. And 
how I've started reading more Libby books is through the 10 year old, maybe older Kindle that I kind of dusted off um, that my mom had been using a few years ago and I, it was mine and I reclaimed it and I'm able to get library books on there and it's amazing and I get through books so fast using it. So anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know again what books you read this year, what books you really enjoyed. Add me on Goodreads, like, subscribe, comment, everything. Okay, see you later. Bye.